so the Lowrider S makes its way back here to the model lineup for the 21 model year. And just to kind of give you guys a brief overview of the Lowrider S and kind of where we've been and, and how far we've come. So the Lowrider S was first introduced to the Dyna platform back in the 2016 model year. It was actually a mid-model year launch in the 16 model year. And they brought it back in the 17 model year. And then in the 18 model year, they basically ditched the Dyna platform completely, which is probably one of the most controversial moves that Harley Davis has done in recent history. And then there was a couple years there in 18 and 19 where we didn't see any low rider S. And then they reintroduced it to the soft tail chassis, which was the brand new redesigned chassis that they came out with the 18 model year. And they basically added a couple things like an inverted front end and you combine that with the mono shock that came out on the new soft tail chassis and you have really just a really good overall performing bike you know it's it's definitely can fit in, in the niche of a performance cruiser and i think that's definitely where harley davidson has kind of postured it within its lineup it's hard to talk about the lowrider s without uh you know just falling in love with the bike over again um you know i when the original soft tail frame or not the original but when the new soft tail frame came out in 2018 and the lowrider came out uh, obviously, I built a black Stage 4, 114 lowrider and kind of did it all up to build what is now basically offered from the factory minus the Stage 4 um, as a blacked out lowrider called the Lowrider S. You know, while it's very similar to what I built, it's actually improved in a number of ways, uh, most notably with the front brake and suspension setup, uh, and a little bit more rake on the, or a little less rake on the front end, which makes it feel a little sharper handling. but. It's still that bike that I, I know and I love. So um, it's hard for me to talk objectively about it just because it's something that I'm passionate about. Uh, but that's also, you know, kind of a, a, a glowing review of the bike itself because, you know, if I feel like I can't be objective about it, it means that it's really tugs on your heart in a really subjective way. You know, we always kind of like to talk about what to ask yourself if you're trying to, do, to determine whether or not this bike's, you know, for you. And I think, you know, I think we'll probably cover that between Nick and I. But a couple things to, to kind of get out of the way at first. So the Lowrider S, when it first came out in the Dyna platform, it came with the 110, which was the biggest displacement shipped from the factory. And now it has the 114, which is the biggest displacement shipped from the factory in the new Milwaukee 8 engine, save the CVOs. This year, the CVOs are uh, 117 cubic inch. As far as we know, the 21s actually haven't been announced yet. So maybe they'll, they'll bump the displacement on the CVOs in the 21 model year. The Lowrider S definitely has kind of been a culmination of a lot of different things in the last five or six years that Harley Davidson has step-by-step step added more things to this bike to kind of, like I said, make it your all-in performance cruiser. So things like your dual disc brakes, which a lot of the, the soft tails don't have it. You've got the Fat Bob that has it, um, and then the FXDR had it. So they're very choosy about what bikes they put the, the dual disc brakes on. And the single disc brakes, I think a lot of people think that it's gonna be, the braking power is gonna be uh, underperform, but quite frankly, the single disc brakes like on your, your slim or your street bob actually do pretty dang good. I think the biggest thing is if you're really riding hard to the canes and you're on the throttle or on the brake, one of the two, a lot, then and you're worried about maybe brake fade and the dual disc brakes would be something that I think would benefit you. Most of the time people buy Harley Davidson's to cruise and so I think if you are buying a Harley Davidson to cruise, then do you need it? Probably not. Now. A lot of times people ask me between the 107 and the 114. The Lower RS obviously has the 114, which equates to about uh, an 1868 cc uh, engine displacement. And the displacement's really strong. Uh, and I can't always say that's been the case with all Harley Davidsons in the past. In the early 2000s and late 90s, you know, with the 80 cubic inch and the 88 cubic inch, by today's standards, those are very, very underpowered. You know, these 114s, the Milwaukee 8s, have more than adequate power, and the 107, quite frankly, is really good even for a touring bike, which weighs a little more than 100 pounds more than the Lowrider S. The Lowrider S comes in at about 680 pounds approximately, uh, which is another thing that's that's been great with the new soft tail frame is they reduced weight by quite a bit over the Dyna chassis. And I've said this before, I'll say it again, the new soft tail chassis is far superior to the Dyna chassis. Now, are there still guys out there that buy the Dyna because it's a Dyna and there's a culture that is surrounds the Dyna platform and that scene? Yes, there's still guys that want the Dyna because of the name and the culture and, and everything that's kind of cultivated in the last decade or so. But I usually tell people, and I tell people straight up, if you want the culture, if you want the name, if you want the look of the Dyna with the two external shocks, then by all means get the Dyna. It's still a cool, good bike. 
but if you really want to spend your money on, on getting the best performing Harley Davidson platform that's out there right now, then there's absolutely no question that the new Softail platform is going to handle better, better power to weight ratio, it's going to brake better. Really every measurable feature and component of the bike is, is going to perform better than the old Dyna. So, and, and really I think a lot of people were worried about the looks as well. When we, all, when we migrated some of the Dyna models over to the Softail platform, like your Street Bob, your Fat Bob, your Low Rider, your Low Rider S. You know, I, I'm a stickler for, for style and everything. I think looks matter as much as, you know, some people are all about function. I think a lot of people that are in the Harley world, they like that component of a Harley Davidson that they're arguably the, the best looking motorcycles money can buy. And so I was really worried that moving the, the Dyna and the, the classic low rider over to the soft tail chassis, you'd probably compromise on the looks a little bit. You don't have those external, external shocks anymore. But you know, really as aftermarket companies have stepped up, you've got fairings, T-bars, things like that. I really don't think there's any compromise at all. I think the style is there still 100%. It's what the Dyna bros love. Uh, and, and let's face it, you know, you've got kind of this, this DNA of the FXR and the Dyna and, and now the, the soft tail and kind of that, that classic look of a low rider that Willie G started years ago, you still have some elements of that look that started back 30, 40 years ago, whatever it was, that are still present on the current day low rider. And that's something that I think Harley Davidson pulled off really well is they didn't compromise the overall look and lines and, and, and design when they made the new low rider S. Really what I want to kind of talk about are things that to you might indicate to you that you might end up being like me and it might be a bike that you fall in love with. If you listen to the things that I say right now um, and you agree with them, the Lowrider S might be a, a bike for you because those are the things that led me to the Lowrider S um, and so they'll probably lead you there as well. So within the Softail lineup, there's a number of bikes that are kind of jacks of all trade um, and the low rider s isn't necessarily the most uh jack of all trade bike that's probably the 114 heritage um but it's up there uh, especially when you factor in the the amount of customizations that are often done to this bike that really turn it into the end all be all i'm going to do everything with this one bike in my garage kind of motorcycle um and so um if you're like me and you ride a lot on the highway and you also like to go up in the canyons and Sometimes you take overnight trips on your bike and other times you just want something that's gonna impress anybody who looks at it because it's absolutely gorgeous. Um, you know, if those are the things that you need in a bike, uh, which is basically everything, then it's a really good option for that uh, when you compare it to something like a Sportster, which is gonna be great around town, drop dead gorgeous, but not gonna be the best overnight trip bike or highway bike um, or something like a bagger where yeah, I mean, you can take a bagger up a canyon road and you can have a lot of fun. And, you know, if you set them up right and modify them right, you know, they're quick, as we saw in the King of the Baggers race. That's, that's uh, for sure. But making those modifications oftentimes compromise the other aspects of the bagger in a way that you don't compromise the soft tail when you modify them uh, in that way. The reality is that as much as you modify a bagger, it's still going to be heavier than the soft tail. It's still not going to have the monoshock uh, suspension geometry in the rear. Uh, it's not going to have the 28 degree front rake unless you're chopping your frame, which, you know, let's be honest, I mean, if you're buying a, a brand new bike and you're chopping the frame up, you're probably not watching this video for insight. So the reality is that if you're looking for something that's going to be nimble and fun and, and good on a twisty road within the, the Harley Davidson lineup, then, you know, the soft tail is going to be that happy medium between something like a Roadster and something like a, an Ultra Limited. But it's still going to give you that long distance, uh, you know, comfort that you're not gonna get on the Sportster, but that's gonna remind you a little bit more of the bagger. So what I'd say is, if you're one guy, if you're a guy that needs one bike and you need that one bike to do a whole bunch of different things, you can't really go wrong with the Lowrider S. When you compare the Lowrider S to the other Softails, it's, it's a really interesting bike because it's almost like a bike that pulls a lot of the features of other, like some of the best aspects of other bikes and puts them into like a, like a classic traditional shape. Um, so like I love the current Fat Bob, but I know that the looks of it are much more polarizing than the looks of the Lowrider S. I mean, the Lowrider S looks like uh, an FXR, which looks like a Dyna, which looks like a bike that's basically looked that way, minus, you know, tank badges and engine trim for what now, 40 years? Um, so it's not a bike that anyone questions the looks of. It's a gorgeous bike. It's been a gorgeous bike 
forever. Um, and so uh, it's not a polarizing visual bike, but you get the 28 degree front rake of the Fat Bob, which is something you don't really get on any of the other soft tails, which gives you that really sharp handling. And you get the 114 and the dual disc brakes like you do on the Fat Bob. So you get all of the performance credentials of the Fat Bob minus the taller rear shock um, without having to go with that bike if maybe you're not super into the looks of it. Um, for the guys that love the looks of the Fat Bob, I mean, you want that post-apocalyptic, uh, you know, big front wheel, chunky front wheel, uh, big, you know, wide bar on there. Um, if you like that look, I mean, obviously you're going to go with that bike. Um, but if you wanted a more traditional Harley, but you wanted all of the handling and performance of the Fat Bob, the Lowrider S is a great option for that. Um, you know, another thing is, you know, you look at like the blacked out finishes of the Street Bob and the Lowrider S has those. It has that kind of mean, sinister look, but it also takes, you know, in addition to that blacked out look, it, it gives you the five gallon tank. So now it's, you know, got that sinister look with the range that you might have been hoping to have if you were looking at a Street Bob. And in addition, of course, you're getting the 114. You know, what I would try to do, I think, to give you a better idea of maybe what the bike's strengths are, since I, I basically just said endlessly positive things and that it does everything really well, is to maybe try to pick out a few things that are things to think about when you're choosing the bike that are, they're not positives. They're, they're more, you know, they're not necessarily negatives. They're just things that you would want to consider and think about before you chose it. Uh, first of all, uh, if you're doing lots and lots of two-up riding, I, I probably wouldn't go for a soft tail. Um, you know, just the uh, additional length and size of the Touring uh, chassis just lends itself better to two-up riding. The rear passenger seats are just a lot wider and a lot plusher, so your passengers are going to be a lot more comfortable. The backrest options are just a lot bigger uh, and more numerous on the baggers. So really, if you're doing a lot of two-up riding, uh, I would pick the, the baggers over the, the any of the current soft tails, including the low rider. Um, although the low rider does have a 180 millimeter rear tire, so you can get some pretty nice wide uh, seats on there by soft tail standards, but not by bagger standards. Um, another thing is, you know, if if you are a really tall guy, so um, you don't need to be, you know, six six like Matt is uh, for this to be a problem. You know, even if you're only, you know, maybe six two, um, you, you might feel a little bit cramped at that point. Um, just because you have the mid controls on there. So uh, now you can add forward control, so it's not the end of the world. It doesn't mean that you need to pick another bike, but it's just another factor to consider that someone like me at 5'8", I'm not gonna feel cramped, um, but when you start getting maybe that closer to that six foot, six foot one, six foot two mark, you, you, at that point you might be the kind of guy that's looking at either a different bike that already has forwards or putting forwards on the Lowrider S just to make it fit you a little bit better. If you know you're doing mostly overnight trips, something like the Heritage is probably a better bet uh, just because it's already got a lot of the things that you're going to end up modifying uh, the Lowrider to have. And the same, the same is true for the Sport Glide. You know, you're going to be looking to put bags on it. You're going to be looking to put a larger fairing on there. Although I will say on the test ride, I was pretty impressed with the amount of wind deflection that I got on my chest from that little you know, headlight shroud that's on there. You're going to be putting cruise control on the bike. You're going to be adding all these things that by the time you've added it, you're now more expensive. Uh, you're at a higher price point than uh, a stock Heritage is, you know, or uh, especially like a stock uh, Sport Glide is. So I think if you plan on doing all those things and you're, you're not like you, you don't need to have the 114 or you're not in love with the looks of the Lowrider S, it's not like the bike you know, that you're, you've just fallen in love with and, and therefore are okay with spending more than other bikes in the lineup that might better suit your needs. If you're not one of those guys then, and you know you're gonna be doing a lot of overnight stuff, but you still want the nimbleness of the soft tail chassis, then I would consider either the Heritage or the Sport Glide at that point. You know, the last thing is that, you know, the Lowrider S is often, because of how many people it is drawing, not only to the brand, but to motorcycling in general, I think that the, you know, the Dyna, FXR and now Softail scene is, and maybe it's just SoCal, but I think based upon the stuff I see on Instagram, it's a definitely a national trend uh, going bordering on international in, in many situations. It's drawing a lot of new people to the brand. And uh, not only that, it's, it's bringing a lot of new riders. And so we get a lot of questions about, well, should I start on a Sportster? And we've done multiple videos on whether you should start on a Sportster or not. And ultimately it's kind of your own personal decision where we're in the camp where, you know, if you feel comfortable on a bike and you're going to ride it uh, and you're going to get that seat time, then you should probably pick the bike that you ultimately want to end up on. Um, you know, where I hesitate to recommend the bigger bike is when someone 
you know, is indicating that they're not going to ride the bike because they're nervous about it. Um, and if you're not going to ride the bike because you're nervous, then you're never going to get comfortable. You're never going to get the seat time you need to actually get comfortable. So in my opinion, if, if you want to be on the low rider S ultimately, and you can afford the low rider S, uh, and you're considering a Sportster for a year or two, uh, just because you know, you're worried that the low rider S is going to be too much power or too heavy, you know, in, my, in my experience at that point, I would just go with a low rider S, you know, especially if you're a taller guy, you're not worried about the size of the bike, you know, you're, you're more worried about maybe the power or just, you know, the fact that it's a little more expensive and it's your first bike. You know, I, I'm just in the camp where I've just seen a lot of people trade in Sportsters because, you know, they, they got the bike, you know, to carry them for a year and it served them well. And, you know, they got a lot of money back on trade, you know, because the, the Sporties hold their value well. So it wasn't the end of the world. But, you know, they come to me afterwards and they just say, hey, you know, actually, I probably could have started on this. I probably would have been just as nervous on this bike as I was on the Sportster. And uh, I didn't really do anything other than keep myself from getting the bike I really wanted for a year. That's, that's generally my assessment. But uh, there's the other category of people that just don't know, based upon their riding, whether or not the Lowrider S is going to offer them any benefits. You know, if all you're doing is around town riding, then the bigger motor, the bigger gas tank, the heavier weight, uh, the extra suspension travel, the bigger dual disc brakes, you know, that stuff's not really going to come into play. So you're spending $8,000 more than an Iron 1200 to get a uh, benefit that's going to be marginal at best for you. Uh, so if you know that you're going to buy the bike, you're basically doing around town stuff, you're going to be less than 55 miles an hour for 90% of your riding, then, you know, I think it's kind of a tough sell to step that extra $8,000 uh, that you're going to be paying to get into the low rider S. Um, at that point, I'd say Iron 1200 is kind of the way to go. If, however, you know you're going to be doing lots of highway riding or ultimately, you know your buddies, you're going to start inviting you on overnight trips and that kind of stuff, I, I would say jump into a soft tail, whether it's the low rider S or the standard, whatever fits your budget at that point, you're going to benefit immensely from the soft tail chassis and all of the advantages it brings that we've talked about. Uh, in the past, but most notably, six-speed transmission, uh, bigger gas tanks, uh, you know, double the suspension travel, even on the lower models. So uh, those are all big advantages that out on the highway and overnight trips, like it's impossible to quantify how much they benefit you. So I, I think the biggest thing in addition to what some of the things Nick has said is that you need to ask yourself, hey, am I buying a bike that I, I want to be able to ride hard and I want equipment on there that's going to complement the type of hard riding I'm going to be doing? Well then the Low Rider S is a great bike and I think that Harley Davidson did a really good job at, at combining the aesthetic with the performance on this bike. Now is the Low Rider S for everybody? No, probably not. Uh, I think it would be a shame if everybody came in here and bought a Low Rider S. You know, with the other soft tails, I think a lot of people discredit you know, things like the Slim or the soft tail standard or the Street Bob. I mean, these bikes are still 90% of what the Low Rider S is going to deliver to you. you know, maybe 80, 85%. You know, you've, you've got the same frame, you've got the same suspension, you know, which is really the, the most important elements of the motorcycle. You have the same engine, just not as much of a, of a displacement bump. And the 114 equates to about 10% more power. And so if you're someone that likes the, the classic post-World War II look of a slim, go for the slim. It's still going to be a very good handling and performing motorcycle. You're not compromising, you know, 50% of the, the bike's value by not going to a low rider S and getting some of those things like the bigger motor and the dual disc brakes. And, you know, again, if you want to save a little bit of money and go to the, the street bob, yes, you're getting a smaller gas tank. Maybe you're not going to do the long range that you're going to need out of the five gallon gas tank. So like the street bob, you know, you're, you're probably going to get about 120, 125, 130 miles to, the, to a fuel tank on the low rider S and the five gallon. You're probably going to get closer to that 180, 190 mileage mark out of that gas tank. And so, you know, most gas stations, are not more than 100 miles apart so in most trips you'll probably be all right but if you're buying the low rider s and you want to also have that bike double as a long distance bike then you're probably going to want to do the, the five gallon gas tank so we'll talk a little bit about suspension for a second so the low rider s does have the inverted front end which i think is cool um, it also does have the performance benefit as well by reducing the unsprung weight in the front end do you notice that a ton you know i think you really got to be riding this bike pretty hard to really notice a huge difference 
when you compare it to just your, your traditional uh, front forks. It also has you know, the added benefit of the rigidity in the front end as well by, by having the thicker tubes up top that are encased by the triple tree. But once again, one of those things that if you ride hard, uh, you know, we get a lot of guys that are coming from the dirt bike world or from the sport bike world that like to ride, ride very spirited. And for those guys, you probably see the benefit out of things like the inverted front end. The other thing that, you know, I think if you follow my channel closely, we did a ton of custom builds last year, and a lot of them were on the Lowrider S. I think the Lowrider S is probably, well, for sure, the, the number one most customized bike that we featured on the YouTube channel. And I think it's because it does offer a lot of things. However, I think that the pitfall that some people fall into is they buy the Lowrider S because they feel like it's the coolest bike, and then they do things like the, the bigger fairing and the, and the saddlebags and the taller shock and things like that. And I think those people, you should probably take a close look at the Heritage or the Sport Glide. You know, the Sport Glide offers a lot of value. It's got the inverted front end. It's got a 107, it's got the single disc brake. But again, if you're buying a Harley Davidson Cruiser to cruise, then you probably won't benefit from the added, the added features that the Lowrider S brings to the table. So, you know, not a bad idea to take a look at those other bikes as well when you're comparing. And you know what, test ride them both as well. I think you'll find as you test ride them that the bikes feel pretty similarly. And so, you know, looking at things like lighting, you know, like the Heritage, for example, you know, you've got the two auxiliary lamps as well, which, you know, right there, you're like eight or $900. So, you know, and, and I make this argument a lot in the touring bike world as well. A lot of guys just want to buy the Road Glide Special or the Street Glide Special by giving no thought to the Ultra Limited or the Road Glide Limited, and then they spend a bunch of extra money and put a bunch of stuff like the Tour Pack, a taller rear shock, additional lighting on their bike, and they basically build themselves a more expensive Road Glide Limited. And, and so I think people just need to be honest about the type of riding they're going to be doing and really assess you know, what, what am I going to have to put into this bike to bring it up to, to speed or to, up to par of what I expect out of my Harley Davidson and really give me the most you know, benefit for the type of riding I, I'm going to be doing. So ask yourself those questions and I think that's going to really help you determine you know, which bike is right for you. thing as well is really a style you know I'm getting to the point now where I, I appreciate the fat bob more and more every day because it's it's something new it's something really fresh that Harley Davidson brought out in the 2018 model year I've always kind of been a fat bob fan I, I like the well now it's a square headlamp but it used to be the dual headlamp in the front but the fat bob is just a really good overall handling performing motorcycle Again, the one compromise you make on the Fat Bob is you have the three and a half gallon tank, which you don't have quite as much range there. Everything else, like the, the steeper rake angle, the dual disc brakes, the 114 motor, you know, quite frankly, I'd like to see more guys go to the Fat Bob. You know, you're a little bit different. Uh, a lot of guys are going to the Lowrider S because it's kind of that sure bet bike that you know you're going to get it. Everyone's going to respect it. Uh, chances are you're, you're probably not going to regret getting it. Um, the resale value is incredible on, on the Lowrider S. And you know, it's, it's a solid price point as well. You know, at $17,999. Um, and I think on my last video, I actually made a mistake and said that the price went up. The price actually did stay the same. And so at $17,999 for a black one, the value is definitely there. And you know, we're seeing actually Lowrider, Lowrider S values extremely strong on like your Dynas and, and even the soft tails that, that have come out that you know are, are now being resold. The Lowrider S values are really, really good. And so I get it. You're never really taking a risk on that bike. I think another question and comment that comes up a lot on, on all the bikes across the board is you know, a lot of times people criticize Harley Davidson for being a bike where it's mandatory that you upgrade it right away after you buy it. And you know, and same with the, the Lowrider S. You know, I show a lot of these bikes on the channel having all these upgrades and everything. And, and I get this comment from some of the haters that, wow, you buy a Harley Davidson and then you gotta spend 10 grand to, to make it a legitimate bike that you can actually ride and enjoy when really that could not be further from the truth. You can take a Lowrider S off the showroom floor ride it bone stock, and this thing is gonna perform very well. The new soft tail chassis is very comfortable out on the highway, you know, I've ridden them, you know, plenty of miles out on the freeway at 65 miles an hour plus. 
They're far superior to the old soft tail frame and, and even the Dyna frame. I know guys that come in here that have $4,000 worth of suspension on their Dynas and they ride a stock soft tail low rider S and they feel like the stock soft tail low rider S is every bit as good, if not better, than their souped up Dyna. Now, can you buy a, a taller shock, mono shock in the rear and make the ride even better? Absolutely. You know, in a lot of our builds, we put the Heritage shock back there. The Heritage has a taller shock uh, stock as it comes from the factory. And you're gonna get a, lot, a little bit more comfort, especially out on the highway. A lot of times the bikes that I feature on my channel are just the guys that go all in and just wanna make it one of those really unique, uh, one of a kind bikes that really just tailor it to be something really special. Is it because uh, the bike has deficiencies when it ships from the factory? No, absolutely not. They want to put it up there in that you know, 99.99 percentile of, of some of the best bikes in the world, and, and that's why I feature it on my channel, and that's why we do you know, a special highlight video for it. But these bikes right out of the box, right out of the factory, are, they've never been better. You know, Harley Davidson really did make a, a knockout bike with the Lowrider S. And you know, I, I'd encourage you guys, too, to check out my video from last year that we did. We rode these bikes into downtown LA, and, and did a few things you know, when the bike first came out. And so I'll link that video in, in a card in this video as well. So maybe check that out. But relatively, there's, there's no changes in the 21 model year. It's the same bike that we saw, which there's no reason to change the motorcycle. It was brand new last year. It was the number one best selling Harley Davidson at our dealership anyways. And I'm sure it was the number one best selling soft tail uh, in the country as well. And so it's back for a second year. Just a solid all around choice. And I appreciate you guys watching. If you're looking for a Harley Davidson in Southern California, make sure you check us out here at Laid Laws Harley Davidson. And we'll see you on the next one, guys. Thanks for watching. Take care. Later.